Tessa, thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's so, we were just talking about that scene and there is a fantastic story behind it and how you had to prepare for it. Yes, a lovely midwife. We went to a, hosp a hospital where there was a maternity unit, so there were lots of new, new babies. In fact, we used one of them a few hours old. <laughs> you grabbed a baby. Yeah, here. we just took one. <laughs> Did you just uh, say, can we have a baby? We baby? did. We asked a ward. Well, we didn't, but the um, um, production <laughs> manager asked a ward of newborn babes, mums, would anyone like to volunteer their baby for an Only Fools and Horses Christmas? But, of course, every hand went up. So I think they fought over which baby was going to be used. But it literally, this baby had been born about two or three hours before. It was just tiny. But we didn't know about But none of us had had children at that point. So the lovely midwife who was advising us said, should we show you a film? Would that help? We'd all just had our breakfast, as you, you know, you start at five in the morning, <laughs> so you're fed by six. So she took us to a cinema and showed us this film, so graphic, all taken from the um, direction of, uh, you know, between the legs. You saw everything, everything. It was really helpful for me, except when it got to all the gory bits and all of us felt so sick. We went sort of green. We all came out afterwards going, thanks for the showing, feeling terribly ill and took the rest of the day. Nobody spoke about it. You just never mentioned again. It was a great form of contraception for the whole cast Indeed. for quite a while, one oh, would imagine. Yes, for a very many years. Very long time, because it's, you know, we, when you don't know about it, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And then you see it. Yes. And then it, you see it. And of course, you never get that chance, do you? Because, well. No. One more in every minute when I first saw that. 20 years ago now. Yeah. So then, you, you know, now, of course, there are programs yeah. that you can watch. But then there weren't. So, it, it, well, we couldn't believe how much gore and blood was involved. And then you had to go and create it for comedy. Yes. yes. For comedy. Yes. And you did it so well. People talk about your programme with reverence, like, about it. Mm. You were signed on for one episode. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. The chemistry between yourself and David Jason just kind of blew people away. Did you feel like you were under pressure to perform or did you think, I'm a single day player, I'm a single episode player? Well, the script, it was dates and it was, I think it was a 90-minuter. It was one of those sort of long... It was almost like a mini-film. And when they sent me the script, I just fell in love with the character. I thought, wow, this is, a, this is an amazing woman to play. And, and I hadn't seen the programme ever, so I was a complete innocent. I had no idea. Um, yeah, and I just went in thinking, this is a brilliant script. I liked... I had to meet David at my second audition and we read together and that was fine. But, again, I didn't really know who he was at that stage. And then we just got going on it. It was all done on film, which was fantastic. Um, yeah, and it was lovely. And I think it was only when it went out, people... The reaction, I imagine... Well, I think people were quite, quite, you know, pleased about it. And I think John Sullivan, the writer, <laughs> felt... He watched it and thought, I think I can develop Del Boy in a different way if we bring in a significant other for him. And I think that's what happened. And then decided he would write more for her and they would develop into a, a, a sort of couple. But I don't think he thought that when he first wrote it either. I think it was only when he saw it and yeah. heard, heard the feedback and thought, oh, I think this David Jason would quite like another sidekick as well as having the Rodney. wonderful Nicholas Lindhurst to have another sidekick. But it... How do you feel about the, the place in the comedy firmament, even, the, even in the British television history landscape that it has? Because it, it's, it's kind of amazing. I've never known anything like it, really. And, again, I, I didn't know the impact when I went into it because I hadn't seen it. And people said, oh, you know, this will change your life. You won't be able to travel on the tube anymore. And when that one came out uh, at, at Christmas, we were living in the East End at the time and it was their flagship programme, which I didn't know. Well, the next day, it was extraordinary. So I had to go out and buy a duffel coat with a great big hood and I thought, I'm not going to not travel on the tube anymore and I just used to put a newspaper up and it was fine. But, yeah, the impact, you can't quite imagine no. it until you hear how many millions then... Now it's different with streaming, but, you know, it was sort of... The Christmas ones would get 24 million. <laughs> that afternoon on Christmas afternoon after the Queen, well, now you go, really? Uh, quite extraordinary and, and I think the... Joy is still that people will come yeah. up and say, do you know how much it gives yeah. us? And children and generations down are still watching it and saying it's changed our lives. You know, it, if we're fed up or depressed, this is what we'll turn to. I, I mean, that's marvellous, isn't it? And I it's think John Sullivan would be so thrilled. Um, the writer. Yes, yeah. who sadly died. But I think, you know, if he is looking down, he'd be so thrilled that people are still, so many years later, going, it's my favourite programme. 